Hello all, MK Wilson here with another update on my 90 gallon salt water system. I had several of uh, my subscribers ask me to do another video so I'm going to give you one on my dreaded nemesis of this system which was self-inflicted I might add and that would be cyanobacteria. I have had uh, this system going for about oh gosh 10 months now and uh, I just started having issues with cyano back in the end of January. I call it self-inflicted because it was my own fault that I had it, but I couldn't get it under control with numerous methods. I started off changing my Chemi Pure Elite, which I would keep two bags in the sump area, and uh, I was changing that out every month trying to correct it and that wasn't doing anything so then I went to doing drastic water changes so I was changing 25 gallons of water out every four or five days and that wasn't doing it either along with the monthly changes of the Chemi Pure Elite I actually had even increased the amount of Chemi Pure Elite I'd put in I had put a uh, instead of two bags I put five bags in this system trying to suck up all the phosphate and silicate, but it didn't help. I uh, placed two in, in the sump originally, one in the area where the overflow box dropped into the sump area, and then one in the return, and then the final fifth bag was placed in the overflow area. And I did that um, for about a month and changed it out twice, and that didn't help. And so with the water changes and that not working, I was like, i got to do something. And so I would watch New York Steel's video on his uh, Phosphan reactor and decided I needed to get one of those. So I went to look for it and, of course, couldn't find any anywhere. They were all on back order, out of stock. And finally, two weeks later, I continued doing the water changes and changing out the Chemia Pure Leak. But two weeks later, I finally got the roll Foss um, that I ordered along with the Phosphan reactor. And so now I've changed it to three bags of Chemi Pure Elite, and I have an example of them here. Those are the 11.74 ounce bags, and I have this honking big tub of Roa Foss. Now, you might think that was overkill, but when I first started changing this out, I was using the smaller bottle, and I was, I mean, I was changing the Roa Foss very very frequently and so I decided I'd get this five uh, thousand gram bucket of it and change it around so that's what I'm using in the uh, phosphan reactor not phosphate media so what I did was on the 23rd of March I did get the the phosphan reactor and I did my first setup with the roll phos and then five days later on the um, 28th, I changed again the Chemi Pure Elite bags and the Roll Foss. And then on April 3rd, I did the same step again, and that was, I think, six days later. And then on April the 11th, I did the same thing again. The three um, bags of Chemi Pure Elite were changed out, and I changed the Foss. Um, the roll of Foss again that was uh, on the 11th and then on the 20th of this month I did it one more time now you might think that's overkill but I noticed on around the 6th, 7th or maybe the 11th even I had noticed that all the cyano was gone there was not a trace of cyano so you would think well it's gone um, I can just go back to using the roll of Foss and changing it every three months like the instructions say but you know I'm just like an overkill person I guess but I put too much money into the system not to have it survive and flourish so I am you know probably anal about it but I've increased it anyway from five days changing it to nine days I'll probably change it out again in another week I'll probably try and go for like oh, 10 15 days without changing it out and uh, another thing that I did which I was my problem and that's why I say it was self-inflicted is I was completely overfeeding this system 
Uh, for example, I would get the mysis shrimp and I would feed my um, anemone that's in the back of my tank every um, three days. I'd feed the hammer coral here that you can see. I feed it every three days. I fed the open coral. I mean, everything that needed to be fed was getting fed every two or three days. The sun coral here was getting fed. Everything. You know, this, this candy cane, everything was getting fed over every two or three days. And I thought, you know, I'd had this mysis left over, with, which the corals didn't eat. So, of course, I just let my fish eat it. And I was still feeding the fish three times a day their food. And so they would get a lot it was a buffet in here might as well say and so I cut down drastically now I'm only feeding the system uh, the coral and anemone once a week and whatever is left over the fish do not get and I give the fish now their food and I give them maybe if I'm here two feedings a day or I just give them the one and if it's two feedings they get enough that they can eat in a minute and if it's once a feeding a day, I'll give them enough to eat in like one and a half, two minutes. And that's it. And uh, it's working out okay. I'm hoping that it continues to be that way. I think it will. But since uh, my cyano cleared up, I decided it was time to get a couple more uh, additions to the system so I'm going to show you those right now this little thing here the red behind the brain coral and next to the toadstool is a goniopora now it's one of those kind that the polyps are really short they don't come out I'm gonna pan over really quick close your eyes if this bothers you this is the goniopora I really like and I had a red one just like that that is under this rock when I did the rocks aquascaping, I lost it, but I found it. But it, this, it looked like this. Well, this one, watch your eyes, doesn't open up like that. It's just little tiny polyps, which is okay. I like it. It's going to sit in that spot for about another week or so, and then I'm going to decide where I really want it. I think I want to attach it to the rock somewhere over here. And then I, I picked up this LPS, this trumpet coral, and it's pretty neat. I like the coloring of it. I think it's really pretty and it's in a nice position I'll keep it there so below that and to the right you'll see this this is a flame scallop it's one of those filter feeding type of things again and I bought two of those because I thought they were kind of neat the other one is right here behind this clam and next to the pipe organ I had him over here and he under this ledge and he moved himself and lodged himself in here I don't know if he's happy there if he wants to get out he can get himself out this one I had under this ledge out of the light behind the uh, elegance coral which is doing okay it's not great but it's doing okay and he kind of moved himself over here so I guess he's happy there and then the other thing that I did get were two LPS's and they're up here. This one that's the green in the center. Well, let me see if I can focus it a little bit better. It is a um, branching Acropora. And then the one to the right and behind it that has its tent its polyps moving around. That one is a double bush Acropora. I like these corals. They're really beautiful. And it's helping to make my system look like it's filling in nicely. I still have a lot more coral to put in, but you know, I'm not in a terrible rush. This system's going to stay, and there's no need to be in a hurry. Uh, you learn that with time, I guess. So, this is the update on my 90 gallon system. I'm so happy that the cyano died. I wish I would have had a funeral for it, <laughs> but I didn't. I guess uh, it wasn't that dear to me to have a funeral. Anyway, MK Wilson signing off. Everyone, please enjoy your tanks. Have a good one.